going to kind of remind everybody, it used to be before COVID, we didn't clutter the aisles with things, and we didn't clutter the benches with things. We always used to put things in the, in the coat area, but COVID happened, and everybody had to keep all their stuff, you know, you had to keep your germs to yourself. So um, I, would, I would just um, encourage everyone, keep the aisles clean, and you could put your bags, boots, whatever, in the closet, um, and that way there, if you want to run around the church or jump and shout or whatever, you're not tripping over anybody's stuff, so. All right. Wow, we have had quite the teachings and devotions, and I have the honor to be able to be up here. Thank you, Pastor and, and Brother Russell. It's always an honor to be in front of all of you. It's an honor that the Lord would uh, let me do this. We're going to be talking about hide and seek or seek and hide. Now, and we don't have to stand. So uh, I was thinking a lot about this, and this is kind of my wheelhouse here, hide and seek or seek and hide. Has anybody ever played that when they were a kid? Yeah. So in our house, and Cody and, and Misty can tell you this, in our house growing up, hide and seek was huge to us. And they do it, we do it now with their children. And Cody always found the sweetest hiding spots. And I remember this one particular time that Bishop had come and he was going to do Bible study. And, and we had this... Um, pantry closet that went up to the ceiling and there was the high cabinet up here and we cleaned out all of the goodies up it that was our goodie cabinet and we cleaned out all the goodies because Cody wanted to hide up there and so Bishop's there and Cody's in there and he's in and he's like I'm telling you he's quiet as a mouse and so he is so quiet everything and I I said hey Bishop can you reach the chips that are up there in that cabinet it's the one and only time ever I got him. And, <laughs> and he reached up there and opened that door, and Cody goes, hey, like this here. And I thought he was going to drop dead right there. It was the supreme hiding place. It was so much fun. It was more fun to watch how he reacted. But I, besides the fact of just playing hide and seek or seek and hide, it's more important that we seek and hide. And that's going to make more sense as we go down through this lesson. Uh, my question that I really want you to think about through this uh, lesson is I want you to think about, do we believe God speaks to us through the preacher or the teacher? Do we really believe that the preacher or the teacher speaks to us through the word of God when it's being taught or when it's being preached? I ask that because we need to ask ourselves, are we just hearing the word, and I know we've heard this in, in lessons before, or are we listening to that word? Because listening means action. There were uh, most of us in here, I don't think, does everybody in here know who David was? King David. Well, before he was king, huh? Yes, David is back there, but he is not the king. Maybe in your house. But in the house of the Lord, he is not. <laughs> yes, it's pastor. <laughs> so, anyways, before David was king, he was just a little guy. And for all of you who have heard this story before, I'm going to shorten it all up and stuff. But he was just this little guy, and, and he goes, and King Saul at that time, there's a battle going on with the Philistines, and, and uh, David shows up there, and they, the Philistines, they've got this dude called Goliath, and he is like huge. And so um, every single time uh, one of the, Saul's men would go and fight Goliath, that would be the end of it. They, he'd kill him because Goliath was just too big. So here's this little guy, David, and he goes up and he says to Saul, he says, look, I'll, I'll go fight Goliath. There's this big difference. And, you know, so Saul wants him to put on, you know, all his armor guard and everything like that. And he's like, no. He said, all I need is five smooth stones and a sling. And God. And that's what David said. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. David goes out there and he's, puts that stone in there, and he swings that sling, smacks him in the head, knocks him down, and then kills him with a sword. This little guy that did it. But David was able to do that 
because of his faith in God. So from that moment on, Saul loved David. And so now David's growing up, and, and now he's in charge of the, uh, of the armies, and he's going out, and he's battling, and he's killing tens of thousands of people, but Saul is only killing thousands of people. You've heard that before in the scriptures? David, 10,000, and Saul only thousands. And so now Saul is hearing this, and he's seeing that the people are thinking that David is greater than him, and he doesn't like it. And so he begins to get very jealous and very angry, and now he is out to get David, and he wants to kill David. And so David decides, I'm just going to take off. I'm going to run. And so that's what David does. And there's several places that David goes to hide. The first place he goes is he goes to the, the prophet Samuel. And the prophet Samuel says, I'm sorry, I can't protect you. And then from there, he goes to the Ziphites. And, he, and he's there in the land of, in the wilderness of Ziph. But the, they turn around and they betray him to Saul. And then from there, he goes to, now I might get this pronunciation wrong because I didn't get a chance to listen to the pronunciation. Uh, I think it's Kyla. I think that's how it's pronounced, yeah, pronounced, how it's pronounced. So, but he finds shelter uh, in Kyla, with Kyla, he finds shelter. But they betray David as well to Saul. And now David has to run again to another place to hide. And the very last place he goes was he goes to Ziklag. And when he goes to Ziklag, they give him some land. And so now he's got this land and everything. It's his own. And he, David goes off to battle again, only to find out that what they gave him, when they, when they gave him the land of Zig, I think it was Zig, let me look, the town of Ziklag, when they gave him that, it burns down while he's away at battle. And now David doesn't have any place left to hide. So David turns around and, and I can only imagine how, uh, how lonely he felt. How, like, he just didn't have a place anymore to go. And David didn't have a place to go in the physical. But David did have a place to go in the spiritual. And so David goes to God. That's what God, that's what David does. He goes to God because he knows, just like in the very beginning when he kills um, the giant, he knows that God can help him. And so... Uh, we can't, there's no place in this world that we can find a safe place to hide. But we can find a safe place to hide with God. It's the ultimate sanctuary. And that's what we need to do. We need to find the ultimate sanctuary. When we play hide and seek, we find that supreme hiding place. We need to find that hiding place in God. God can give us the ultimate hiding place. Psalms 27, verses 4 and 5. Psalms chapter 27, verses 4 and 5. Psalms chapter 27, verses 4 and 5. It says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And you could be seated. What an amazing uh, scripture that is. When we go through and we think about this, there are several places, for instance, right in the very beginning, he says, I will seek that's what he's going to do. That's talking about he's going to look for the truth. He wants the solution to what his issue is, to whatever his challenge is. He's going to keep seeking until he finds the solution. And then it goes on and he says, but I'm going to dwell. It means I'm going to remain. You remember pastor talked about this. I'm going to sit and I'm going to keep going to God until I get that figured out. And then from there, he goes on and he's, he, again, he says, inquire, which means to seek. But he says, he's going to inquire and seek in his temple, in his sanctuary. We're getting answers right out of this one scripture to what we need for the challenges in our life. Because God protects us. Like if you were in a thicket of bushes, you know, 
then it can't find us. If you're in a thicket of bushes, there's so many bushes there, there's so much there that no one could see you. And that's how God protects us. It's undetected the way God protects us. And then he says, in the secret place. Secret place means hiding spot. It's the ultimate hiding spot. He's going to hide us there. But then where it says, of his tabernacle, it's talking about home. He's hiding us in his home. And the very last part, he says, I'm going to set you upon a rock. And that word rock means it's a, it's a symbol of strength and stability. Everything we need is right there in that one scripture. And we've got a whole Bible to look from, to look to. And that one scripture tells us that when we have challenges in our life, we're not supposed to hide we're supposed to seek God because he is the one who is our refuge in our fortress. He is the one who finds us the ultimate hiding spot. We don't need to keep running from place to place in order to figure out how we're supposed to deal with our, our challenge in our life. That's we're not hunted like David was hunted. At least, I don't know, maybe at times you might have felt like you've been hunted like that because sometimes... Life can bring challenge after challenge after challenge after challenge after challenge, and you're like, when is it going to stop? Amen. Would the world just stop and let me off for a little while? It could feel that way. But God knows, and he knows that we get challenged emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And that's why he provides for us. And I'm sure everybody in here from time to time, I know I have, have felt like running and hiding just running away and getting away from it all. And to me, that's like fight or flight. That's what we got to do sometimes. We just think in our physical minds, fight or flight. But that's not the answer to it. We need to find the solution. That's what God said. Find the solution. Sit there. Seek the ultimate hiding place. Hide and seek instead of seek and hide. So when we think about hide and seek, if we hide first, then we are not giving God the opportunity to do for us what he needs to. We're not giving him the opportunity of what this scripture talks to us about. If we're hiding first, what we're doing is we're putting ourselves in a very unwanted place, a place where it just causes stress, anxiety. It's a very dark place. Instead, if we go to seek and hide, then we're going to seek God first. We're going to seek for the solution first. We're going to seek for that, uh, that sanctuary that God talks about. In the very beginning with David, he hid first. Then he sought God. But then after that, he sought God. And that's the key to everything. We need to seek God first. So I asked you, do you believe that God speaks to us through the preaching and the teaching of the word. Well, I could, I could say, yes, I do. But pastor, I can also say there's been times when I didn't feel that way okay. yep. because my physical thoughts took over and I can only see my situation with the physical because that's natural for us. Remember I talked about the carnal mind, right? It's natural for us to do that. But God wants us to be able to hear the answers he has for us. How many times have you cried out and you're like, God, I'm going through this and I'm going through this. And where are you? I need you. And then you get up here and the preaching or the teaching comes out. And maybe you've sat there and you've gone, how did, how did he know or she know what I was going through? How, how, do, they, how do they know that? Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm not this great wisdom. I don't have this great wisdom and look into a little glass ball and neither does Pastor or Brother Russell or, or, or Brother uh, Bodwin back there. It's not like that. We pray over our messages. We pray over what the church needs. We get to know you individually. And then we ask the Lord, what does your church need, God? What can we present to them that's going to help them, encourage them, build them up, give them the answers they're looking for? Inevitably, the answer comes through the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. Think about this. I'm doing a message today that says hide and seek, or is it seek and hide? 
And I'm presenting you, presenting to you, it's seek and hide. Over the last several weeks, this is what we've been taught. We've been taught God is our refuge and our strong tower. We've been caught been taught that moving towards God is the answer. We've been taught being a light, not being an Igor, right? We've been taught praising the Lord and how it affects us when we praise the Lord. And we've been taught stop thinking with the carnal mind. Do you think that all of this has been done by accident? God knows. But inevitably, when the word is preached and it goes out, when the word is taught and it goes out, I have seen time after time where people just sit there when the word's going out and the answer's right there. And instead of taking that word and going, oh my goodness, mind-blowing, right? Mind-blowing, there's the answer. What it does is they start, we start thinking about the challenge that we're in, but it doesn't stop there. We continue to think about the challenge. And then we get into this negative thinking. And then, oh, what am I going to do? People don't understand. Oh, my goodness. Instead, we need to think about the challenge and go, there's the answer. God just gave me the answer through pastor. God just gave me the answer through Brother Russell. God just gave me the answer through Brother Bodwin. The answer to our challenges is here. We should never walk out of a service when, and, and still be in the same place that we were when we got here or worse. It shouldn't happen that way. We should be leaving here with the joy of the Lord. When we hear about our situation or reminded of our situation, then we take the word that's been given to us and go, there's the answer, the ultimate hiding place. I can go to God first. I will seek him. He's got the answers. We need to seek his strength because if we seek his strength, then we don't fear. And lots of time we're overcome by fear. When we get into that negative thinking and really mulling in our minds over and over about the challenge we're going through at that moment, what happens is we get to a place where now we start to fear. Fear takes over and then stress and anxiety. And, and before you know it, we're, we're just a bumbling mess. I know I've been there. And I still get there at times, but I work really hard. Psalms uh, 27, 1 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Guess who's saying this? David. Now, I believe David said it like this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He didn't go, Well, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Well, praise God, I hope he didn't sound like that. <laughs> who, who, whom shall I fear? No, he said it boldly because he believed that God was his, his hiding spot. He believed that God was his sanctuary. We don't need to fear. We need to, to use David and the word that he spoke boldly as our example so when we really start to, to mull over these things and we're, we're starting to fall into that place again, you're su we're supposed to take notes on what's being said. We've got a video that we can go back to through the week. So if we start to fall back into some of those things, go back to the video. If you're not going to write it down in here, go back to the video. Let it encourage you. Look up these scriptures for yourself. Let the Lord speak to you through his word. Because that's how it happens. I can give you this, Sister McAllister, and I can give you all the scriptures. And there's a lot that we have to say. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm full. Yeah. I was telling, sharing that to Pastor. Sometimes, Brother Russell, when he's up there and he's, I, I don't know how he does this. He just rattles. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and he just rattles off and he knows things from 1976. I don't know how he does that. Why am I talking about that? I don't know why I'm talking about that. See, it made me get, you just did that to me. It made, made me get off track. We're supposed to take those scriptures. We're supposed to take the word that's spoken. And now it's yours. Because I've prayed for you. Pastor's prayed for you. Brother Russell's prayed for you. Brother Bowden's prayed for you. Take it. Take it home with you. And now go, Okay, God, maybe that wasn't for me, but this is. 
this scripture right here. Now speak to me. Psalms 27, 4. Again, David. One thing I have desired. One thing, one favor, God, that I've got to ask you. God, just one favor. One favor. That I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. I may, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Behold, right? He says, behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Oh my goodness. Isn't the word just, just incredible just to hear that word? I don't know about you, but it's just exciting me. The fact that I could go to God and say, God, I need a favor. I need you to hold me. I need you to help me because I'm broken right now. And that's what David did. He said he desired the presence of God. I desire the presence of God in my life. Because without his presence in my life, I feel lost. And in order to have that presence, we've got the presence of God. And I've said this before. All around us, everywhere we go, God is there. But there's nothing like having the presence of God in here. Because God can do so much more with us when we allow him to fill us completely. We are supposed to dwell. We are not supposed to dwell on the problem. But we are supposed to dwell in the house of the Lord. We're supposed to remain there. We're never supposed to allow ourselves to walk away from there. And I know that that might sound a little silly in some people's minds when they're going, well, how am I supposed to do that 24-7? It's easy. When we pray and we read our word and we stay connected, once in a while, we need to call someone. Right, Sister Linda? We need to text someone at 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. But what does it do? It re- when we can talk to someone who can encourage us, it reconnects us from time to time. Our flesh gets disconnected from the situation and the Spirit of God is on it. We're supposed to have the joy of the Lord during the challenges in our life. So we need to seek the Lord and His Word. I mean, I was thinking about David and and I I thought about the fact that when, when David, during the times of David, he went into the temple. He didn't have the Holy Ghost like we have it today. He just went into the temple. But we are the temple of God. So how much greater are we than David when we are the temple of God and we receive his spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Psalms 27, 8 says, When you said... Seek my face. My heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. David said that too. I think he really loved the Lord. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. He sought direction from God first because he knew that God would definitely have the answer for him. But the next thing that he did, there were also times when he was going through some challenges that he went to a priest called Abiathar. He went to the priests, the ministers, or your mentor who's who's doing Bible study with you. He went to those people and he said, can you help me? Can you guide me? Why did he go to them? He went to Abiathar because Abiathar was connected with God. He needed someone with flesh on at that time. And so he goes to the priest and says, this is what's going on. And then the priest turns around and he's going to give him godly direction. Godly uh, direction for his life and which way he needs to go. That's why we have teachers and preachers and, and ministers. Even the children downstairs. It even goes down there. That's their preachers and their teachers down there. Yep. Proverbs 1.5 says, A wise man, a wise man. Everybody say a wise man. Wise man. Yeah. 
a wise man, will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Everybody say wise counsel. Wise counsel. So a wise person is going to seek, not hide, seek wise counsel. And then in Proverbs 19.20, it says, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. We, we're considered wise when we seek the counsel of our pastor, when we seek the counsel of the ministers in our church. God said that, and he didn't really give us a choice. Think about this in 19.20. Listen. We, we do a lot of hearing, but not a lot of listening. And God said, listen to the counsel. There's a reason for that. So we could, we could choose to just sit in our chairs and be in the molly grubs and, and not get the answer from God that we're looking for or just go, oh my goodness, how did they know that? And then walk out feeling the same way as we did before. Or we can go, nope. He or she is my wise counselor. The Lord just spoke to me through them. Thank you, God. It's not some, woo, somebody, you know, secretly told them all about you. Or... In the time of trouble, he will hide us. We need to have a daily awareness that Jesus is there. It's that simple. We need to be daily aware that he is always there at our side. He's, he's not far from the minute we call on his name. He's right there going, I'm listening. He shall set me upon a rock. Now, this was my favorite part about this scripture. You know why? Because it's talking about being a symbol of strength and stability. And I don't know about you, but I need strength and stability in my life every day, all day long, because you guys know we get tripped up in our jobs, our homes, wherever we go, wherever our little feet or big feet, whatever you got trod, that's where we get tripped up. I got big feet. That's where we get tripped up. But we can go to God because he gives us that strength and that stability. Psalms 27.5, and I already read some of this. It says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide. He shall protect me in his pavilion. In the secret place, he is going to protect me in that secret place of his tabernacle, of his home. He shall hide me. He shall set me, uh, excuse me, he shall set me high upon a rock. He's the one who is going to protect us. He's the one who's going to give us the, sweeting, the sweetest hide, hiding spot ever. We could go and play hide and seek all we want. And we could even get to a point where we could scare Bishop and he didn't even know it was going to happen. But the Lord will give us the ultimate hiding spot when we're broken, when we're being challenged, when we're filled with anxiety and stress. There is a healing for all of these things. But we need to seek God and, and we need to seek his hiding place. God said that uh, he will pull us out of the miry clay and that he will set our feet, right? He's going to set our feet on that rock is what he's going to do. Amen. Psalms 27, 14, wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer and he shall strengthen your heart. And Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. I know there's been a lot of scriptures here today, but every one of these scriptures are, are scriptures that can encourage us. Encourage us to come out of that dark place that we've been. Encourage us to know that God has the answer for us. We need to know that, you know, there's going to be times when we don't like to wait. I don't know about you, but there's times I don't like to wait. And, and, and I don't know about you, but society has taught us to be impatient. Right? How many times when you're on like some kind of technology or whatever? Now, I grew up on AOL. What is it? 
AOL, AOL, what is it? Am I saying it right? Yeah. See, it's been that long or long ago. And you're waiting and waiting for it to connect. And now, if I go like that, immediately, it's like, what's wrong with you? Because society, everything's just so instant. We get it. Boom, 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 boom. If we want a hot meal, go through a, a restaurant that does, you know, McDonald's or whatever if you want a heart attack. Instantaneous. We need that. But the Lord said, wait on the Lord, be of good cheer, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say. Wait. God's what? Do you get what he's saying? He's saying, wait, you got it. He is. Sometimes he doesn't always work it out right away, does he, Sister Ruminate? Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes. And go make yourself busy. Go do something. Don't sit there and start being discouraged. Waiting doesn't always necessarily mean that you're just going to do this. Because that's when we begin to stink and think. Yeah. Stink and thinking, right? That's when that happens. Get up and make yourself busy in the Lord. Read the scriptures. Go to your word. Pray. Go hang out with, with somebody else who knows who God is. Be encouraged. Go back to the lessons. You notice I didn't say lesson. I said lessons. Every one of them are available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. They're all there from way back whenever we started. If we really, truly believe that God speaks to us through the preaching and the teaching of the word, then we're going to do something about it. We're not going to just sit there and go, well, that's a good word, but you don't understand my situation. Well, I may not understand or, or have been exactly in all of your shoes. But I can tell you, my shoes that I've walked in with my kids have been hard enough to walk in. And I went to God. And, and it's not about whether my position is exactly like your position. It's about the fact that God knows our position and he knows how to take care of it. He knows the hiding place. So to, tonight, after this service, after the worship service, don't walk out and just cast the message aside. Oh, I've heard that before. Oh, that's too simple. Oh, whatever. Hide it in your heart is what the word says. So you might not sin against them. Any, anything. Hide it in your heart. A lot of people in here are, are um, familiar with Corey Ten Boom. Yep. Anybody in here who's not? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you a little story about Corey Ten Boom. So the woman, uh, Corey Ten Boom, uh, she grew up during the Holocaust. And as a little girl, her father used to read the Bible to her every single day. And she carried that with her everywhere she went. Now, this was during the time where the, there was a German, the German war was going on with Europe, and uh, they were taking the Germans, or the Nazis as we know it back then in history, uh, they were taking the Jewish people, and other people too, but they were taking the Jewish people, and they were sending them to death camps. It was horrifying, absolutely horrifying that people would die, children, women, men, all of them, sent into these chambers and just gassed to death or burned to death, thrown in big, huge pits. But Corey Ten Boom's dad wanted to be able to help protect them. And so he went up into Corey's room one, one day, and uh, he had someone to help him, and they built a false wall in her bedroom. And over the time that the Holocaust was going on, they had helped save eight, over 800 Jewish people. But then one day, 
they were caught. And when they were caught, her, her sister, her father, and Corey were taken to the, the death camps. The father died not soon after. He, he had passed away. And then the sister was killed. But during that time, Corey was treated so cruel, cruel, uh, uh, so cruel, what's the word? Cruelly, thank you. That she was left with so many things in her head over this. And I'm not going to go into details. If you want to know what she went through, you can go in and read it yourself. It was absolutely horrific what she went through. But she remembered what her dad had taught her. She remembered the fact that her dad would read the word of God to her every single day. And what she realized, she has a book, and I'm not here to sell the book. But she realized then, she went through stuff that none of us will ever go through. What we go through is a walk in the park compared to what she went through. And I'm not trying to make light of people's situations. I'm trying to say that there are people who get challenged worse than we do. And instead of just throwing, it, you know, throwing her hands up and just dying, she said, no, my father taught me that there's a greater hiding place. And that was in Jesus. And if you go on and you look her up, you'll see she's written movies. She's had people, uh, she's done talk shows with people. Uh, she just, she has such a tremendous story to be able to tell. But she doesn't want people to remember poor Corey Ten Boom. She wants people to remember Jesus. Because she sought deep Jesus first. And Jesus hid her in that ultimate hiding spot. In his sanctuary and helped heal her mind and all the cruelty she went through. I think we could do the same and even greater, especially for those of us. We've got his Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. We are the temple now. We don't just walk into a temple. We are the temple. We're everywhere we go. We take him with us. Which means if we go up to someone who doesn't have his Holy Spirit and we're talking with them, guess what? We just invited them to the temple of God. We need to make sure that we are seeking and hiding and not, not hiding and then seeking. And you are dispersed until worship service at 5 o'clock.